everyone, and a warm welcome to another session of the AI Entrepreneur Series from the Strashek Center. In this session, I will provide you with a deep dive into some of the design and AI process modules, which I introduced in another video. But before we jump into the topic, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Jennifer Moosbrugger, and I am a designer and researcher at heart who, uh, for the last couple of years, worked in the emerging and exciting field of artificial intelligence and machine learning. I am currently the head of UX-driven AI at Siemens Digital Industries, and my research focus is on human-computer and machine interaction in the age of AI. In my daily business and job routine, I work with a lot of different stakeholders, such as product management, sales, data scientists, machine learning engineers, IT departments, UX designers, so on and so forth. They all do things slightly differently and focus on different topics during their development cycles. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes this also creates gaps and challenges. So I ask myself, how can I assure that those people can still collaborate with each other, taking their different approaches into account? And this slide is just a little reminder um, from the other video, because based on a huge amount of use cases in industrial as well as more commercial settings, and a lot of interviews with stakeholders and experts, seven process modules that support this cross-disciplinary collaboration were established. Um, the modules are, again, set up, understand and define, input, modeling, output, deployment and processing, as you can see in the overview here. And um, as you might remember, they are enriched with concrete activities that um, each module comprises, also mapping the flow and dependencies. Each module creates an outcome, which is the prerequisite for going forward. Um, there's a proposed structure and order of the modules, but you can and should actually use them uh, flexible and in a modular and iterative manner. And therefore, the given representation was chosen, being more a cycle of activities rather than a linear flow. But as I said, in this session, I want to get more concrete and have a look at some of the modules with a deep dive. The understand and define module, as you see here, is from a human-centered design perspective the most crucial one. It implies a problem definition and activities that are related to the users and other stakeholders of the AI solution, such as need finding, user research and expectation management. User involvement and engagement play a central role in this module. It is meant to make sure that the focus is not purely on technology and data. And furthermore, some items are relevant only for AI-infused projects, such as the goal and success definition at this early stage and the expectation management. New tools such as data user stories, strategic pyramid canvas, amongst others can be very helpful. When all the team members have an understanding of the process and business domain, the team can define the product vision or even visions, similar, more visions. Afterwards, um, it is necessary to move forward to the next modules, obviously. So let's elaborate the different steps and activities using a concrete project example. Um, so this is the Quantify 3 project. Um, it's uh, from the public sector, not industrial based. And um, yeah, it is um, about the water supply prediction for the trees in the city of Berlin. And because this is a um, project based in the public sector, um, the team had to do a lot of interviews with experts that you know, do the job at the moment watering the trees. And they also did a lot of co-creation workshops with the um, citizens of Berlin because um, they wanted to understand how they can activate them to help them water the trees in the city. Due to climate change and climate warming, especially trees in the city are having trouble. So um, they need support in um, watering the trees. 
So while talking to the experts, they found out that the relevant data types and parameters for the assessment of the state of the trees is, you know, a lot of weather data. So how much rain do the trees get and how much water do they have from rain? Um, also the temperature, the tree location, the soil type, as well as the tree type. So they knew what kind of data they need to collect. And findings from the co-creation workshops with the citizens were that, you know, they really wanted to understand why a tree needs water and how much water a tree needs. And also being able to communicate with other citizens, you know, if a tree already was watered or if it still needs um, water from the citizens. So therefore, they developed two personas. One was called Amti, that was pretty much the persona of the expert. And the other one was called CV, so, or, you know, citizen. Um, that was the, the person um, represented by the Berlin citizens. They also developed a couple of user stories, as you can see um, in the example here. And from one very relevant um, user story, they created a little data user story, meaning they also incorporated the information of the data they need in the back end to realize the machine learning system. And what you can also see is that um, they developed an initial product vision that was really driven from the flow of the user. That is the swim lane you see in the middle. So the user needs to authenticate him or herself so that the app knows where the person is located. Um, they need to query if a tree um, needs water or not. They have to take action and then they have to give feedback um, on, on a really you know, simplified bottom line. And then the development team, the, the data scientist, the UX designer and the business um, person and the experts from the city thought about, you know, what is happening in the front end and what is the technology we need to make this happen and also what is the um, technology and the um, um, tools we need in the back end to support this user story. And this product vision helped them to really understand what is the goal of our project, how does the system need to look like, and what are the technical, um, the technical things we need to make this happen. And as a next deep dive, I want to go into the input modeling and output module because you know, they are also very important when it comes to machine learning systems. Um, the input module is dedicated to all the data work that is necessary in AI and ML driven projects. A back and forth of data understanding, collecting and preparing is very common. And most people think that modeling might be the biggest part of such a project. It isn't. A lot of models are developed already for the different application scenarios. Mostly one of these can be chosen, trained with the very own data and used to you know, create a uh, solution. For the output module, issues such as transparency and explainability of the system, failure communication, collecting feedback, human in the loop possibilities and non-visual UIs need to be taken into account. Moving from a static towards a more dynamic human machine interaction. So let's elaborate um, this, those three modules um, um, and activities using a concrete project example again. This time it comes from the industrial AI domain, so our very own Siemens ecosystem. We used um, visual inspection or object recognition for um, yeah, um, checking PCBs, printed circuit boards where you know, a soldering material is placed on, on the boards. Interestingly, we also took a lot of time in um, the module Understand and Define because we went to the manufacturing side, talked to all the people involved in the process, had a look at the data and realized um, that you know, we think machine learning could improve the accuracy of the quality of the um, printed circuit board quality insurance. But um, uh, since I want to put the focus on the input modeling and output model, let's have a deep dive here. So um, the components that are assembled um, use the so-called through-hole technology. And you see some examples um, of the data we got, so were pretty much JPEG images that the camera made from the boards when they were um, at the end of the, of the manufacturing line. And, um, it was using um, a hard-coded software piece to distinguish whether this is, you know, 
um, a, a good class or an error class. Um, it was not using machine learning, so they had first of all trouble with um, you know different manufacturing sites and the different lightning that happened during the day. Um, and they put a lot of those circuit boards um, out as error class, although they have been high quality and could be shipped to the customer. There was a lot of um, data um, available, but it was labeled incorrectly, right? Because a lot of the error class um, pictures um, were actually not er non-error class um, pictures. So we had to sit down for a long time and label the data to make sure that our um, algorithm is trained with you know, a correct um, amount of, of data. So that took a lot of, lot of time, but luckily we didn't have to um, create data. We could use the ones we had and just could relabel it. Then in, in the modeling, we used um, an, a model that was already available um, and also used um, a cloud provider um, that um, supported us with the infrastructure and we could put our architecture easily in there. And then um, testing revealed um, that our initial model had actually a very low accuracy, so we had to go in again and um, and had to put an um, autoencoder AI models. So it was an assembly of different models in the end to make sure um, that you know, it detected the right error. And after a couple of rounds in the input modeling and output module, as I said, you have to use the modules iteratively and in a very modular manner. <coughs> we highly improved um, the accuracy of the, the models and um, were able to support the factory in um, shipping more PCB, PCB boards that were actually uh, of high quality to our customers. And um, um, as I said, there are a lot of uh, already pre-trained models out there. And um, this, in this um, kind, you can also have a look at the model cards from Google that explain the object detection models in more detail. And then you can choose the right one for your project. You don't have to make them or create them yourself pretty much. So um, yeah, these were the two deep dives uh, I wanted to present in this little video. And as I said in the former video, developing AI systems needs a diverse set of skills and people. Um, it's all about data, sorry to say, but shit in, shit out. Um, and therefore combining big, so statistical, with thick, qualitative data is a crucial part of solving AI challenges. And I think that you hopefully understood that the under understand and define module is exactly supporting those activities. Designing for AI means designing for a human-machine relationship that is dynamic and not static and problem definition and understanding a human focus combined with technological feasibility and business viability create the biggest impact. I hope you enjoyed the session with the deep dives into the process modules to support the development of AI-infused systems. For further information, you can visit design-intelligence.net and feel free to get in touch and keep in mind that technology in combination with a great usability and a real business need is most valuable.